أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We glorify him and we thank him for his blessings and favors upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran about invitation towards righteousness invitation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invitation to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah reminds us in the Quran about da'wah that it is our responsibility at every opportunity that we have we need to make sure that people are being reminded and people are being directed to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah he he reminds us that this is indeed a noble task this is indeed the best of task that you can be assigned. He says in the Quran, Woman Ahsanu Kaulam Mimman Da'a ilallah. And who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we we, we live in in a time where we see so many moving away from that concept of the oneness of God. We see so many people not having faith in their creator. We, we see so many people feeling that whatever they possess their wealth, their knowledge, their resources is what really matters. And uh, th there are so many who negate the very existence of God. So we, we are really living in, in very difficult times. There are people who say they believe in a God but their actions demonstrate something totally different. Today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, myself and another brother, we were being asked by a, a, a brother who listened to us 
talking about Islam and our deeds and why we need to do good things. And his question was, wh why is it that we have to move in this direction continuously? The last 50, 60 years we have been talking, this may be his age, and he's saying, the last 50, 60 years we have been talking about this. And, and there is no difference in the people. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَةً فَعُلْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Remind, for bear, verily remembrance, it benefits the believers. We don't know whose heart will be touched. We don't know who we will make a difference to. And so we, we, we need to continuously remind. But the frustration was, these are the same people who have been getting this message. You are telling them day and night, every opportunity that you have, you're reminding them that just as how this person has passed, and this person is returning to Allah, you will also return to Allah. Make amends. Turn around your lives. And they walk away from there, and it's just waiting for another opportunity when someone else dies. So, so you can understand one who is practicing one who is living in accordance with the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who is striving and, and, and hearing this constantly and you're not seeing that uh, massive change in, in the lives of people, what they're wondering, why, why the frustration? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he is reminding us that this mission of invitation, it's an, a, an ongoing mission. It's a mission until the end of time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the day when he delivered his final message, he said to the people, Taraktu fikum ma in tamasaktum bihi lan tadillu min ba'di kitab Allah wa sunnati o kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I leave with you two things. If you follow them, you will never go astray. The Quran, the book of Allah, and my traditions, the traditions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said to them, فَلْيُبَلِّغَ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِرِ Those who are present, go. Move around in the world. Invite people. Tell them what you have heard. Remind them about their responsibilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remind them about their duty to their fellow human beings. This is the da'wah, this is the invitation. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ And who is better in speech than the one who invites to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And not invite only, my dear brothers and sisters, وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he is doing righteous deeds. He is engaged or she is engaged in the, the performance of righteous deeds. Hassan al-Basri, in, in looking at this ayah from the Quran, he, he described the person who does this as Habibullah. He, he, he gave him description out of this world in terms of the closeness of that person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the beloved of Allah. 
You are Waliullah, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are the helper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are engaged in the invitation towards Allah, in the invitation towards goodness. We see so many of our young people who, who need this invitation. They need to be constantly uh, directed into the right, uh, put into the right direction. We look at our own families, our friends, our neighbors. We, we don't have to go far, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. People are just sometimes frustrated with life and all the difficulties and challenges that they have to go through on a daily basis. And, and, and it's all about looking after themselves in terms of material things. It, it is important that we be helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in constantly reminding people that there is right and wrong and the right said truth it leads you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrongdoing it takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That which leads you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will insha'Allah help you to gain Jannah. And that which takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will take you into the hellfire. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the best of you are those who invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are engaged in the doing of good, righteous, pious deeds. And you also, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, you, you say, وَإِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ and I am one who have submitted my life to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quite often we, we say or remind people of this saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha ila yawm al qiyamah. He who innovates, he who starts, he who implements something that is good, he will have the reward for it and the reward of those who follow him in doing it until the day of judgment. I imagine the, the, the thawab, the rewards that you will have when you do good things and people follow you in doing that. Imagine the rewards that you will have just in your home. You are engaged in the doing of good in your children, your family, they see it. And they emulate you, they, they do the same as you do. You read Quran, they are, you know, the Quran has become a love for them. You do dhikr. You help the poor. You make a difference in the lives of people. And they emulate you in doing that. Can you imagine the thawab, the blessing that your own children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and others will bring for you? But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also said, that the one 
who innovates something evil. وَمَنْ سَنَّتْ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً فَلَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقَيَامَةِ وَمَنْ سَنَّ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying if you do something wrong that alayhi wizruha wa wizru man amila biha ila yawm al-qiyamah that you will have the sin of it and the sin of those who follow you in doing it until the day of judgment can you imagine you are an alcoholic in your home or you are a drug addict in your home or you don't pray you don't do anything that is God conscious you don't do anything that is right and your children are seeing you, your family, they're seeing you, and they practice the same thing. Imagine the, 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 uh, the sin that you will incur because you have not helped them to change their lives. So if they practice what you have been doing, their sin will also come upon you. And that will happen to you until the day of judgment, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Th that is why it's so, such a noble thing for us to be engaged in invitation towards Allah, in invitation towards goodness. And especially in this difficult, challenging time that we live in. L look, at, look at what we see every day on the TV. Look at the behavior of people. Morality is at its lowest ebb. Some people who had such great esteem, popularity, all of a sudden they're down because of what they did to women or they did to others. Sometimes our children, they see that and they think this is the norm and it's okay for us to do it. That just as how others, they touch and they, they do things uh, that they're not supposed to do. I, if, it's, if it's okay for them, then it's okay for me. And little children are growing up today and saying, it's okay for me to touch the girls. Because of what they see. So there is so much to be done, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, in terms of bringing people back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he emphasized this so much. Among his companions, he would always be telling them things that will keep them intact. Keep them connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember when, when you invite, as this great scholar is saying that you are Habibullah, you are a friend of Allah, you are a helper of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَلَيَنْسُرَنَّ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَنْسُرُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he will certainly help the ones who help him. You help Allah by bringing people to the path of Allah. Allah is saying he will certainly help you. And Allah is strong, almighty. Allah doesn't need anything from us. But here Allah has given us the opportunity to receive His help if we spend our time doing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is reminding us that He will let, extend that hand to us He will help us My dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah tells us in the Quran كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَأَغْلِبَنَّ أَنَا وَرُسُلِي إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has written that him, 
Allah and His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will definitely conquer. Whose side do we want to be on? Do we want to be on the side of Iblis? When we know that Iblis has been defeated and will be defeated, do we want to be on the side of Shaitan, the devil? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I will conquer. And there is no doubt about that because Allah is, He says, He is Aziz, He is Qawi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is strong and He is almighty. So we, we want to be on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's, it's all about struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Invitation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it, it, it requires commitment. It, it requires struggle. It requires dedication. It requires consistency. You can't give up. You will meet people who will make you want to give up. Sometimes you will just want to give up because of your own families, your friends. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was faced with the same thing. He met resistance from his own family when he invited them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he continued he went to others and continued to give the message. So it, it's a struggle, it's a jihad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that this is a right, this jihad, this struggle, it, it, it's, it's, it's a right that He has upon us. Allah tells us in the Quran, Wajahidu fila hakajihadihi huwa ichtabakum wama jaalay alaykum fit dini min haraj millata ibra abikum ibrahim huwa samakum al muslimin min kabl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and struggle, make jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jahidu fillah haqqa jihadihi. With an endeavor which is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has designed and given you this deen. And Allah is reminding us that He has not placed any hardship in it. Some people find that the following of the message or implementing the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is hardship in this. I have to get up and pray. I have to read Quran. I have to do good to people. What did they do to me to earn the, my goodness? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that when we do this, when we engage ourselves in this da'wah, in this invitation, there is that comfort and happiness. Allah says that there is no hardship. 
He has not placed any hardship upon you in this deen. This is the path of your forefather, Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was sammakum al muslimin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, it's, you were not, it just didn't happen, just like that. Allah is the one who give you that title, that you are people who are submissive to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are people who are engaged in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not lose that identity, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. That's the identity given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we are a people who are submissive, we are people who are obedient, we are a people who invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We invite to goodness, we practice goodness, we engage in goodness, and we strive to make sure that other people are engaged in goodness. So, don't give other titles to yourselves. Don't move away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed for you. Allah continues and he says, وَفِي هَذَا لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ وَتَكُونُ شُهَدَاءً عَلَى النَّاسِ Allah says, and this is so that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he will be a witness against you and you will be witnesses against mankind my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah continues in this verse and he says what is it that you need to do to maintain this identity to maintain this fact that you are people who are submissive, you are people who are obedient, you are people who are engaged in invitation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are people who are struggling. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبِّ اللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so engage yourselves in prayers always show your gratitude to your creator be constant in the establishment of prayers be constant in the doing of good Allah says here twofold and when, when we look at it my dear brothers and my dear sisters throughout the Quran we find it mentioned like this Allah mentions salah and then he mentions zakah and sometimes we, we don't look at it in this way when we look at salah, salah it's a personal thing Allah is telling us take care of yourselves don't neglect yourselves. And then he says about the zakah and take care of others. You have a responsibility to the, to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we look at it, oh, give zakah. But Allah is, is, is telling us in, in saying, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةُ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةُ That you take care of yourselves. Make sure that you are upright. Make sure that you are committed. You are fully obedient to Allah. You are struggling for yourselves. And then Allah says, and take care of others. Bring them to the path. Zakah is not merely just giving of money that you have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he said, وَعَتَسِمُوا billah." and hold fast to Allah. Hold fast to Allah. 
my dear brothers and my dear sisters, don't lose sight of your Creator. Hold fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is your Mawla. He is your helper. There is no one who can help you if Allah deserts you. So hold fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that you're always connected to your creator. And you will definitely have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, at times it can be very difficult inviting giving the message. Remember that in, in, in terms of inviting people, you, you have to know them, you have to understand them in order to be able to address them. Everyone would not be able to be addressed, you cannot address everyone the same way. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he used to say, speak to the people in, in, in the language that they understand. Come to their level. That, that is what he's talking about. Sometimes we, we talk and talk and we don't understand what is, what is happening with our people how difficult life has been for them. What is really their troubles and their challenges? And so we need to know them. And sometimes we don't want to listen. We only want to talk. We need to listen to other people. When we listen to them, we get, we get to know them, we can, we can format our mission, our da'wah, our invitation, how we should go about inviting them. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, don't ever be judgmental. We, we love to be judgmental. We don't know why people are in the situation that they're in. We, we don't know why they have resorted to what they have resorted to. Yes, dawah is very important but there is a methodology. There is a methodology in talking to our families, our children, our brothers and sisters. And sometimes that methodology has to change from people to people. And so we need to make sure that we are not judgmental. And at all times, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we, we, we need to encourage and support. Encourage people. Support them. If you leave them, so many times I have said, don't give up on people. Don't give up on your families. Don't give up on your children. You give up on them. You leave them isolated. There's so much can happen in their lives. That is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, alaykum bil jama'ah. 
be together. Always look for opportunities to, to stay together because the wolf eats the lonely sheep. People get carried away in different directions when they are by themselves. Shaitan starts to have an impact on them. It's important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that we continue to invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to stay engaged, to stay focused on this noble task of da'wah ilallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sa'iru al-mu'minu al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Bidwanullahi alayhi mila yawmiddin Amma ba'd My dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He reminds us in the Qur'an Saying Qul hadhi sabili Ad'u ila Allahi ala basira Ana Waman Ittaba'ani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Says Say This is my way I invite Or To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sure knowledge. I and those who follow me, wa subhanallah, wa ma ana min al mushrikeen. And glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not one of the idol worshippers, or I am not from among the idol worshippers. Contrast. When we look at what Allah says in the verse that I quoted first, Wa innani min al muslimin And verily I am from those who submit my life. I am from among the Muslims. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this is your way, invitation to Allah, and that you are not from among the idolaters, you are not from among the one who disassociates himself or joint partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, you have been commanded as well as I have been commanded, all of us. And we have only been commanded that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. Let us be sincere in all our actions, in all our intentions. Let us strive for the benefit of ourselves and the benefit of others. Life is short. Make a difference with the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination does not help. You don't know what tomorrow holds for you. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when the morning comes, do not wait for the evening. And when the evening comes, do not wait for the morning. Because you don't know if you will live to see morning. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us work upon ourselves, work upon our families, our brothers and sisters, our neighbors. Let's help, help this community to grow. Let's help one another to stay attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. 
and may he save us from the torment of hellfire. لقد أمرنا الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن العظيم حيث قال إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى اللهم من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون قم السلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر